on stage okay so when you came in to actually bow you didn't bow <laughs> okay uh, and then when you when you got your applause uh, you know bowing is is one way of saying thank you for coming I'm glad you you are here to to listen to, to what I have to say and then after they applaud it's them it's like you saying Thank you for appreciating whatever I did, whether it was good or bad. <laughs> and spending your valuable time into listening to, to everything I did, okay? So can I have you come again from the backstage and bow with a big smile? You have a nice smile, use it. You know, take advantage of that smile. Go, go over there again. I would like to see you do that bow again. And very, Look like you're you're very excited to play for us, okay? That doesn't look like you're excited. It looks like you're scared. <laughs> are you scared? No. no. Are you nervous? No. Okay. So show us that you you stand over there, and, and I'll show you what it looks like to be excited to play Beethoven. Okay. Stand over there, watch, watch me. Confidence, smiling, excited, gracious. Okay, not like you're 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 scared to play. So come over here again, do it again. step on stage that's included in the performance so you know this this sonata for example uh, what do you think is the character of this sonata of this movement for example it's bright, it's bright. bright. brilliant right okay uh, is it uh, happy unhappy Cheerful, okay, show us cheerful when you're walking. You look like you're, 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 you're uh, afraid to do, you know, to be in the character of being cheerful, you know. You're very young, so you must have had a wonderful childhood if you are able to play like that. Okay, so come over here again. Faster walk, faster walk, you know, not, 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 not so... Oh my God, I have to do this all over again. Oh my God, oh my, oh my. <laughs> You know, okay? Happy. Brilliant. Brilliant, happy, lively, vivacious, full of life. Okay? Try it again. Okay. Double the speed of walking. Try it again. This is very important, Iris. Almost speed walking, almost running. You're so excited to play. Come. Yeah, that's better. Okay, you don't have to go all the way down. Oh my goodness, I forgot to shine my shoes. So low. <laughs> and take that long. You know, it's just graciousness just a little bit of thank you it's like saying thank you okay oh okay not 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 you know uh, not the uh, Asian way of saying thank you a little bit more thank you okay a little bit not so low not so short okay 
Yeah, try it again. Yeah, start. Let's start from there. Excited to play. This is my best friend. Yeah. Yeah, better. You know, the thing is, you have to treat the piano as an extension of you. It's like your best friend. All right. So you have to feel like you're going towards the piano as if. Oh, I haven't seen you in such a long time. I've missed you throughout this pandemic, you know. <laughs> well, I'm sure every day you got to see your best friend at, at home, right? This best friend, okay? But it's that kind of mindset, all right? Because when audiences are sitting there waiting for you to come on and play, as soon as you step onto the stage, that's already part of the act. We are actors. We're supposed to, to be in character of the music that we play. So once you step out, you're supposed to be in that character already. Understood? Okay. And then after you get the applause, you know, uh, yesterday we were missing a, a, a little girl played for, for me. And we haven't even applauded yet. She got off the bench and bowed. <laughs> she was super excited to to acknowledge whatever applause she, she will be receiving okay so uh like that kind of excitement that's kind of a desire to to play for people okay using this as your extension of your voice okay good have a seat uh, what do you know about this particular sonata or or about Beethoven when he wrote his 32 sonatas. What do you know about those 32 sonatas? Not much? Okay, I'll tell you. Beethoven had three periods when he wrote the, 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 the sonatas. Uh, the first one, the first period is, is what they call uh, the imitation period, where he was imitating uh, things like uh, uh, composers like Haydn and, and, and Mozart and Bach, a little bit of Bach, you know. Then the second period, which is uh, uh, the middle period, is basically the experimental period, when he started trying to get out of the classical forms, uh, the classical period forms, uh, and um, uh, expanding it into uh, things that that would have been crimes in the classical period as far as writing music was concerned and then the third period especially the late sonatas uh, specifically the late sonatas were focused on transcendentalism meaning he would uh, in theory or virtually see himself rising to the heavens. And so you will hear that a lot in, in the music that he wrote in this late period. And so he started building a bridge to the Romantic period with those late sonatas, okay? Then Schubert picked it up and became the bridge to Romanticism. Schubert, his biggest fan, who decided to bury himself uh, next to Beethoven, okay? Um, uh, so this one, very early, Opus 10, number 2, is an imitation sonata, okay? Uh, who do you think he's imitating here? I mentioned it earlier. Haydn. Okay, Franz Joseph Haydn, his teacher. <laughs> he studied under him uh, composition, and so uh, in this in this particular thing, even the textures and the homophony, do you know what homophony means? What? Homophonic music? It's basically melody accompanied by harmony, okay? That's very, very clear in, in Haydn's writings, that the homophony is, is, uh, is, is uh, transparent, okay? So this is still very transparent. It's very classical uh, period. It's not so much 
that you know he started experimenting when when he got into Baustein, Appassionata, and you know that those are experimental you know, sonatas. Okay, so when you when you treat this, play it like you're playing Haydn. All right, uh, but he was trying to adjust his style uh, away from from those he was imitating. So there are some Beethoven-esque elements in this particular sonata that, that eventually becomes his staple. Okay, so let's, let's try it again. And um, uh, when you see, I, I noticed when you were performing that you were pretty much uh, following a lot of the Beethoven markings, okay? Uh, it's very important in Beethoven that uh, that you follow everything that he writes. What edition is this you're using? Okay, if I, I would suggest and, and highly recommend that you look for the Henley edition or the Dover Schenker edition, okay? Because those uh, are pretty much the closest things to the to Beethoven's manuscripts. All right, and so. Uh, what the thing why I'm saying that it's very important to follow his his markings is that he would revise a lot of his works. If he didn't like the way he wrote it, he would revise it. Sometimes he would tear it up and write something new, uh, or 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 sometimes he would he would uh, start from scratch, you know, um, and and say. And then revise it again, and then you know and he was not he was not like Mozart that whatever Mozart heard in his head, he would just write it down, and the first draft is the final draft. Okay, it's not it's not the same. Um, but so that's why when he finally uh, he finally um, uh, the final his final drafts when he already got what he wanted, that's, that's like written in stone. So that's why Beethoven, in that sense, is easy to play. Because all you have to do is follow every single thing that he asks for. And you add, of course, you know, um, you add things of your personality, of your interpretation, uh, but the basic laws are already written down, right? It's like a Bible, you know. It's already written down. You just have to follow the laws, but also you have to make an, uh, the, the, a better interpretation of that particular, the spirit of the law. Okay, not not necessarily um, the the writing of the law. Okay, so let's try it a little bit again. Uh, from the very beginning. Think Haydn, think high classical, think nobility, think uh, majesty, almost elitist actually, okay? Okay, how about when you have a chord, a triad or a chord or an interval, what is the most important note? The no, in a chord. A chord, one, one chord. What is the most important note of all of those chords? For example, the, the, first, the first chord. Of all of those seven notes, which is the most important? The top note, okay? So bring that out and, and push down everybody, every, every the other six, so you, so that this would sparkle, you know. Okay, play it again. What's the dynamic marking? Yeah. Is that soft enough, do you think? Ah, okay, so first of all, it has to be light. Second of all, it has to be soft. Thirdly, you only bring out the top note. Actually, it's better not to have to make the extra effort of bringing out the top note. It's much easier 
to control all of the other notes. Make the effort of lessening all the other notes. So that the top note will come out naturally. Okay? Better. I like it. Better. Okay. What is the value of the first chord? Notational value. Rhythmic value. It's an eighth note. Next chord? So how come they both sound like sixteenths? Because? Ah, good point. Now this is a secret that don't tell anyone, okay? It's just between you and me. The value of the note is more important than its articulation or its phrase. Okay? You have to fulfill the full value of the note before you articulate it. Therefore, when, when you see a staccato, staccato just means short or detached, okay? So there are many degrees of staccato. But the most important thing is that you fulfill first the value of the note. So it's a little bit longer than your staccato. So it's thumb bum Okay, that's still short, try it. different okay now you're being being uh, obedient to to Beethoven's values okay go, go ahead do it again very good that was nice do you like it and it it, it, it has this certain light mystery about it right it's a very light mystery. Um, it's like the first few episodes of Stranger Things. Right? You know, it's not, it's not scary right away. It, it, it's, it, it, it gives you a tease of how, how, how mysterious actually is it going to be a dark piece or is it going to be a light piece? And we will find that out in the next phrase. Okay, so do it again. sunrise right you know and slowly from 5 a.m. it slowly rises to 537 a.m. okay so uh, it, it, it um, that's why he puts that that um, uh, crescendo uh, hairpin over there so that this becomes your peak and then this has already a diminuendo a short diminuendo you have to be very precise where exactly the peaks are and where it starts, he starts his crescendos or diminuendos, okay? Um, there are many, especially in, you will see in, in Dover or in uh, Henley, that sometimes he writes piano for a long time. And then suddenly, like 16 measures later, there's a forte. That means you have to stay soft for those 16 measures and shock us with the forte. Unless he writes crescendo somewhere else, it stays piano, okay? So in which case, this piano stays until the beginning of that crescendo, okay? Good, try it. Because uh, as far as I remember in the Henley, 
That is the P, the C. Taram piram. He never goes, taram piram. You know, he's not shy and coy. All right, so I think this is a misprint. That's why I, I really highly recommend look for the, for the Henley. Uh, so that is your peak. Tadam pan. Okay. From there. No. Tadam pira to the second C. Tadam pira. Is there a way to make that all together? Maybe it's the fingering, huh? Not always one three five one three five. All right. Uh, maybe we can. You can re revise your fingering. Excuse me for a minute. That um, you know this. This really. style the harmony always is just an accompaniment okay the melody is the one that's contoured and shaped so this you can contour and shape that but this one should be a supporting harmony it's just an accompaniment okay try it again Because even at Haydn used to do that. It was called Sturm und Drang, storm and stress. Okay, so he actually started it, not Beethoven. All right, but uh, Beethoven liked that idea, the concept of, of shocking, that he created sforzados uh, and also subito pianos, the sudden softness. Even though you're doing a crescendo, at the end of that crescendo, there's a sudden softness. Because he could only really 
hear vibrations uh, of, of, of the, the keyboard. You know, he was, he was partially deaf already very young, right? What more when he became fully deaf, right? Okay, try it again. How do, you, how do you make a legato? That's the most evasive uh, principle in, in piano playing. It's the most difficult and the most evasive. How do you connect the notes? Sure, you can connect all of the notes, but how? Okay, that's one. Proper fingering is one. But also, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you see that horizon, you know, when you see a sunrise or a sunset and you see only half a, a sun, does it mean that it's, it's really just half a sun? Okay, there, it's, it's a full sun, right? So it's your wrist that completes that circle. All right, so every time you see the phrase marking, your wrist is the one that's supposed to, to complete that circle. Okay, uh, so as much as possible, guide your wrist with the proper fingering. You're right. You know, you need you need the proper fingering, especially if you're going very far. In that. But you use your wrist to transfer the weight of one finger to the next. Okay, without using the fingers, you place the finger on top of the note. But it's the wrist that transfers the weight from that from the previous note to the to the next note. Okay? Does that make sense to you? Okay. Can you show me? Right hand low. Good, better. Okay, now give it more meat. Give it more weight. Even though it's piano, depth is different from volume. Okay, again. cello, right? It's all connected. It's easier for them. So that's why you need to, to use more wrist and more weight in order to become deep and horizontal. All right? You don't want to sound, uh, I call it choppy. It's like you're chopping onions. All right? It makes me cry. All right? Try it. with your body so that you have more weight. Yeah, depth is different from dynamics. It's still piano. 
The dynamics is piano, but the weight has to be deep. Good. Next. As much as possible, okay? You might have to do some revisions of fingering so that you are able to achieve all of those connected uh, lines, okay? Next. Separate the melody from the harmony. Ah, okay. Two note phrases. There are two words that can describe a two note phrase. And it's the most grateful two words in history. What are those two words? Huh? I don't know. Those are three. <laughs> and that doesn't sound very grateful either. Thank you. Grateful. Two words that, that show great gratitude. Okay? Two note phrases. Always grateful. Da da. Thank you. Never thank you. Okay? Always thank you. All right? So when you're speaking, when you say thank you to somebody, if you say thank you, there's a, that might be a profession. There's a, that could be uh, you're trying to become a professional game show host. Thank you! You know, come on down. The prize is right. Okay? Not in music. It has to be da. Okay? Nice and, and, and great, great, grateful. Right hand alone. I just want to hear that. Da da dee. Harmony. 
harmonies that exist there, that they are hidden, you know, there are hidden harmonies inside there. Aside from the, the right hand chords, there's also a, a part of the harmony in the left hand, part of those chords, okay? That's what a pedal does. Don't be scared. As long as you don't pedal through passing tones or neighboring tones, it, it, you, you are collecting, you're trying to collect the harmony or establishing the harmonic structure. Very important in Beethoven, okay?
throughout pretty much, right? Um, can we have a little bit uh, of this of this uh, this middle section from here? Lots of pedal, forte. Yep. precise with the dynamic markings and the phrase markings. Try to get the Henley. I know it, it's not downloadable, but uh, I'm sure your teacher has a copy. Okay, and, and so try to try to compare it and see the phrase markings, if they really exist in Henley, uh, or there are those that exist in Henley that might not be here. Okay, but refer, make, make Henley the, the, the better reference for Beethoven sonatas, or Schenker by Dover. Uh, and uh, be very precise with all of the markings uh, and use more pedal. Find, listen carefully to where you can put pedal. Just don't pedal on passing and neighboring tones. But make basically pedal to establish harmonic structure. And then separate the melody from the harmony. Contour the melody, shape it, but the harmony stays stagnant. Okay? Great. Thanks so much.